Hi everyone, and welcome back to Total Win. Uh, today we have uh, our first, well, no, not our first, sorry, our second Brothers in Gaming uh, series. However, it's my friend V's first ever video. Hello everyone. This, this is V, this is my other best friend. Next, You've already met Ryan, playing Dawn of War 2. Uh, so me and V are going to be playing something a little different today. Um, so v, me and you have, uh, I say, a penchant for adventure games. Somewhat, yes. That is to say we like them, we're not good at them. <laughs> well, I mean, speak for yourself then. <laughs> we've uh, we've already completed a couple together, uh, which we're probably going to be playing again because some of them were really good. We'll do Broken Sword as well, shall we? Yeah. Cool. And but mind you, oh, I don't know because Broken Sword, we both pretty much know what to do. I mean, I remember Broken no, Sword one. Number two. Oh, okay. Sure. Maybe Monkey Island as well. I've never played that, so you got to play the Curse of Monkey Island and Mega Monkey. It's great. Anyway, this is the Stanley Parable. Dan, yes. what is this game? I have no idea. I, I literally have, have no idea. No either. idea because uh, you just. You gifted it to me. Thank I did. You. I heard a lot. I'd heard. A lot, I knew you wanted to play it, and I'd heard a lot about it, but I didn't. I know. I know it uses the um. These the same engine as Half Life does, I believe. Half Life Two. Oh, okay. Whatever that's called. I can't remember. The Valve engine. Valve engine, is it? So yeah, so. we believe it's an adventure game. I think it is, anyway, or a point and click game at least. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, I don't know. I think I think it's more controllery. Okay. You move the guy around, but I don't actually know what. Uh, so uh, well, what you're supposed tell to. Tell you what, let's get in there and let's see what happens. And uh, hopefully, guys, you'll enjoy this series because we don't know what to expect. We've never seen this before in our lives. So. Uh, so this is blind. The Stanley Parable. The end is never the end. Is loading. <laughs> well, this is promising already. Wow, that's a long load time. I have maxed out all the graphics because I'm not sure what the graphics actually look like in this game, so I just assumed that my PC could run it because it can run like Shogun 2 on the highest graphics, so I thought it could run this. Unless, of course, it's crashed, I'm not sure. No, it moved a bit. Or unless this was some kind of weird opening screen puzzle. <laughs> yeah, you have to like. Oh, okay. oh, oh. Alright, alright, that's, that's not so bad. That's still a long time. Yeah, maybe we should. Unless, of course, down. there's no loading screens now. Yeah, maybe. I suppose so. So, uh... B, how are you? I'm um, okay, Dan. How are you? Uh, not bad. But anyway, that's not important. <laughs> this is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, one telling hand. him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winding, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley, was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Ah. I take it we are Stanley then. It looks a lot like fear graphics actually. <coughs> the sharpness and everything. Oh well, god, that's wrong, is it? It also reminds me somewhat of fear, in that I'm a little bit frightened. <laughs> what? Surely you would think, you know, if you walked in and there was no one here, that something was up. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Hmm. Hang on, very quickly, guys. Just, uh, try to kill immersion. I thought there might be a walk button, that's all. That's fine. Oh, bollocks. What did you do? I pressed begin the game again. Oh, that's okay. That's alright. Oh, that's fine. Have a look at his office a minute. 
Let's well, follow the story. We'll probably have to go back in there anyway. All right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Down Perhaps there. he had simply missed a There's memo. There's a computer screen over there. Is that right? Is no matter it? how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. That's wow. weird. <laughs> I guess we just follow the open doors. I assume. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Hang on. Oh. Hang on. <laughs> what? I got on the right. <laughs> okay. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay. That's quite cool. All right. That's a bit weird. Oh, by the way, me pressing start the game again is probably how as well as this playthrough is going to go for the majority. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. <coughs> it had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. <laughs> Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Okay. Should we stand there? No. We but stay. eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What's in there? That looks ominous. It also looks ominous. Stanley was so bad at following direction, <laughs> it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. <laughs> I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. Oh, this is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. I don't. Well, sure, surely this is planned that you can actually do this at this <coughs> early on. Well, of course. Uh, otherwise, you w they wouldn't give you the option. But I, this it's really just, confused me. This is just toying with my brain, a little bit. Sorry. Um. Oh. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Um. Can okay. we pick up the phone? We did pick up the phone. Damn, what is this? I don't know. I'm I kind of, I kind of wonder what would happen if we just done what he told us at the beginning. Sweetie, sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. Whoa. <laughs> gotcha. Oh, come on. It's 427. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? Who'd want to commit <laughs> their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. <coughs> Let me show you what's really going on here. This is really creepy. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. <laughs> <laughs> Press V on your keyboard. Are you going to do it? Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him. And every <coughs> button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. <coughs> No. <laughs> Look at him there, 
pushing buttons, <laughs> doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now he's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. But in his mind, ah, in his mind he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. I'm kind of worried that we're not commentating over this so much, but ladies and gentlemen, the, the, the game has to kind of play itself a little bit right now. There's yeah. not much we can say. What do you think, Dan? Uh... I suppose it's a good thing we didn't do what he told us to do at the beginning, because that's the whole point, isn't it? Yeah. I d I don't, I'm kind of very intrigued as to what's happening. Yeah. Okay, well. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. <laughs> First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. <laughs> so, he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. That mannequin there is just creeping me out. Mm. Press, what, press two to spend time with the boys? <laughs> we didn't spend time with the boys. Is this... Is this supposed to be just us thinking now? Possibly. Press 2 to spend time with the boys. Oh, that would, that would be good. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. What? It was such a wonderful fantasy, and so in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets. The more he forgets which life is the real one. Do go to sleep. <laughs> I think that's probably the safest thing. Is it always? And I'm trying to tell him this. That in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. No. <laughs> oh. Push it then. Push it. No, I, I... You're not going to push it? Does that mean we'll be stuck here forever? I don't know. Well, hopefully, eventually, we're like, see, he didn't even do it. Well, push the button. Down. Push right. the button. Give it a minute. Give it a minute. We're trapped here forever, aren't okay, we? Okay, I'll push the button. You see, <laughs> can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's office. electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? <laughs> I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time... And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried...
Is this... Did I just die? <laughs> what? <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> what the fuck? I was wondering if that was technical All difficulties. All the were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I think we just got punished for not doing what we were told. And we died. Because we didn't listen. What should we do? I suppose we should better do what he says. Maybe we should just do what he doesn't... Do the opposite of what he says again, just to see. Maybe, I don't know. Do you want to try that? I mean... Just to see if it's a, like... I but if know. it's not, we have to sit through all that again. True. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. <laughs> Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Cabal planning. <laughs> <laughs> this box is too small. Let's do it, 432. Don't tell 432 about my meeting. At their meeting, sorry. We're broke Wednesdays. Financial pl panic Fan meeting. Financial panic meeting. Termination Tuesdays. <laughs> uh, what else is here? Tomorrow, complete today's unfinished agenda items. Agenda items. Right next to his agenda, reflect. Reflect. <laughs> the future is yesterday. Tomorrow is now. Stand standardized graphs for 40 times wide, not cost efficient. Get Chris, Get Chris out of the room closet. Synergize, synergize papers. papers. Hire, hire someone. someone to <laughs> papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody. Hire somebody to fire the paper <laughs> synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? <laughs> well, what's that little thing in the corner right there? Jim. Four thirty-one to Jim. What is? Oh. Comatose. <laughs> Spring Mitosis. Break. What are your dreams of the future? <laughs> Mitosis. <laughs> oh. Mitosis is the process of self. Total less to unbelievably work. amazing work all the time, every day, with no exception of promotion or recognition. Don't, Don't get, get fired. <laughs> uh, sounds like my job. What is hot? Profits, 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 pro profits. I just saw a dispute with a coworker. Let it boil up inside you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Resent coworkers of not supporting you more. <laughs> Let, it boil up Let it boil up inside you. <laughs> Using slides to assure employee that everything is okay. Make sure your slide is a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel all text to ensure a calm and productive work environment. <laughs> oh, this is fantastic. Stanley just stood there doing nothing at all. <laughs> he seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This is why Stanley and I are on such good terms. <laughs> this is so good. <laughs> <laughs> the boss appreciation minute. On your boss appreciation minute worksheet, circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out in triplicate and return to your boss appreciation specialist. <laughs> Solve your interpersonal conflict. If you ever find yourself in a conflict with another diligent employee, like yourself, but more inclined towards conflict, unless you're the kind of person who initiates conflict, why did we hire you? Back it, back it, back it, back it. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh we couldn't read it. What's, uh, what's that? What do people want? Things, happy, happy, happy feelings. Things. Mike James, you're, you're fired. fired. Money, more money. Things, but with money to buy more things? Graphs. Graphs about things and money. We have our new product. <laughs> so you work for, we work for a graph company. I imagine so. We need less reviews. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary <laughs> review schedule, but I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers. More water cooler heaters. Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographics. <laughs> Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. Big net? Some sort of child trap? <laughs> One, no more bins. Slash trash guns. Two, renaming of the idea bin. Three, firing of me. Four, Ideas bin. <laughs> oh, fantastic. 
Synergize core value <laughs> expenditures, shift global market power out, monetize free to play. Okay, I didn't understand that, but that's fine. Okay. Oh, there's a guy in there, isn't there? Apparently. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Me and oh. V just looked at each other. Oh, now, come on. Come now. <laughs> this is just a test, isn't it? But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? <coughs> All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. <laughs> All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field. And it too appeared. It was so much fun. And Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Oh. Why is there a voice in my head this is repeated. dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly oh. strange. What? I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. This is crazy. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, Give up. that's all I want. I want my apartment and my wife Monica. and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Huh. Or not. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone wake me up. My oh name is God. Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, oh. can someone tell me I am real? I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? 
and everything went black. <laughs> <laughs> this is the story of a woman named Mariella. <laughs> Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, oh, and then collapsed wow. dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. What the wow. fuck is going on? <laughs> oh wow, heavy. What the shit? Oh, where are we? We're in room 47, there's paper all over the floor. <laughs> Damn, what's going on? Right, okay, we are gonna stop the video there, guys because we've just come up to our time here. <gasps> but me and V are going to be back soon to play more of this and just get our minds completely destroyed by this game. Okay. Uh, also, apologies for the lack of commentary, but obviously there's a lot of commentary going on just, on its own. Just watch that game being played. <laughs> so, I uh, hope you all enjoyed that, guys. Uh, another episode of Brother in Gaming, and we'll both see you again very soon. Yes, we will.